Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. I'm here today to re-upload the rundown of Slider Season 4. Yes, finally the last re-upload of the rundown because my audio was really bad in the original videos. Now, like I said before, I won't be doing Season 5 because I hate Season 5 because I'm allergic to bad writing and I really don't feel like coughing and sneezing all the time. Hachoo! So, here we go with the rundown of season four. Season four was a breath of fresh air after that bizarre, strange, crazy season three we had where there was always movie monsters. There was always tons of action. There was tons of like sex appeal, eye candy type stuff and the really bizarre season. So now season four. They are still in L.A., that's where they film, and David is still the new showrunner of the show. Tracy Torme, he was let go in season three. And he tried to regain um, Sliders back before the start of season four because he didn't like what David did in season three. But Universal had a two-year contract with David, so Tracy just decided to leave. Also, this show got a major facelift. No longer is it on Fox, but now it's on the sci-fi channel. And we lost a character from last season and got a new one in this season. The actress Sabrina Lloyd decided she wasn't going to return after conflicts with Kari. And also because of money disputes and stuff. So Wade is now gone. She was sent off to a Chromat breeder camp. We got the introduction of Colin Mallory which is Quinn Mallory's brother that he never knew of. And there's a really interesting story with him, well, I'll get to it a little bit later. But that actor is played by his real life brother, Charlie O'Connell. Season four I went back to the premise of season one and two, where it is now going back to the whole idea of the what if factor, them going to parallel dimensions and being similar or um, or different from the earth they're from, but they have more of a sci-fi feel to it because it's on the sci-fi channel And once again, it's going back to the possibilities of hey Some of this stuff that happened on this world could very well one day happen in our world And once again, they have slightly predicted the future um, In terms of what has happened in our world since this show ended um, back in the day so this season kicks off with Quinn and Maggie. They finally reach Earth Prime after um, sliding for about three months or so. He finally fixed the timer the way it could piggyback on Rickman's timer. So now they're wandering through the streets looking for their friends. And Maggie is starting to hyperventilate again because her lungs are different from that of those of Earth Prime. But she quickly adjusts. Why did she quickly adjust? Plot armor. See, they can't have her being in a bubble this entire um, episode. So they just said that her lungs readjusted from all the sliding. It's weird, but hey, I'll go with it. <laughs> so they wander through the streets and they see it's pretty abandoned. And they see the Chromags. Chromags have now taken over Earth Prime because one of the sliders had a tracking unit in them and they didn't know that from the season two episode, Invasion. And so... We will learn why it's not Quinn and we know it's not the professor. So it had to be either Rembrandt or Wade. And I'll get to that also a little bit later too. So as they're trying to figure out what's going on, they're like um, greeted by like this resistance fighters and stuff. And they found out that, you know, like I said, Chromas have literally taken over the world. Um, I don't know if they meet the resistance group first or they get captured first. I can't really remember, but anyway, they are, I think they meet the resistance people first. And so they try to bust out some of the people out of um, the Chromat prison. One of them people is Rembrandt because, you know, they're desperately looking for him. So they go in there, they infiltrate the place, they shoot it up. And Rembrandt is in utter dismay. He has literally been tortured for the past three months as he's been in prison. And what's even worse is that he couldn't even save Wade. And we all know that him and Wade are really good friends and he had a crush on her in season three. Like she was literally just ripped from his arms and there was nothing he could do because the Chromax are just too powerful and stuff. 
And so Wade, she got sent off to a breeder camp. And that's all we see of her. Well, we don't even see her at all in season four. And so Rembrandt, he, he is messed up in the head. Like, basically, I'll get to him when I go to the character profiles a little bit later. But basically, it's like, he doesn't even believe Quinn is really Quinn. And then he later on does. And then he find, and then Quinn finds out his mom is literally a prisoner there, too. Now, she tells him the biggest revelation of them all, which totally shocked so many fans. Quinn is not even from Earth Prime. He is from Chromat Prime. He was sent to Earth Prime as a baby when the war bust out on Chromat Prime. And to top that all off, he has a brother. His mom reveals to him that um, their doubles came to them and told them the story. And so she adopted Quinn and stuff. But here's the strange thing. If Quinn's... Okay. Let's get into this part. This is what Quinn's mom looks like. And this is what Quinn's dad looked like. Now, this is what his real mom and dad looks like. Do you see the resemblance? Because I know I sure don't. Because, <laughs> like, if they're their doubles and they're supposed to look the same, why are they two completely different people? And it's in the same episode. That would don't make no sense. I'm starting to think the lady who normally plays Quinn Mom is unavailable because she was unavailable in season two. I haven't seen her resume or seen her in anything else, but I gotta check out her um I um B what's that thing called IMBD profile and see like how much stuff she's in because if not then she could have literally played her um other self. But I digress. So she gives them some Chromag Prime technology, like this little memory dot that she puts on his head. And that's the revelation that he finds out he's from like another world and stuff. So now the goal for him and the rest of the sliders this season is to liberate Earth Prime by finding a weapon that his father created to get rid of the Chromags and stuff. And also, the other premise of this series, season is for him to find his brother. And basically, that's what they do. After some shenanigans here and there, of them escaping and, and getting recaptured and stuff, they finally slide on off that world. Now, let's get into a little character profiles here. I'll start with Quinn. No longer is he the guy who's rushing into danger from season three no longer is he trying to be this big time like um 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 tough guy like superhero type dude now he has slowed his jets he has now known his role he checked himself at the portal and he no longer is just leaping into action he's now thinking things through and now since the professor is now dead he has now become the primary like smart hero of the show who's always saving all these worlds and now since the professor is gone, he is now the top uber, like, smart person of the show. The way he was doing, doing like, there's some things he does that makes no sense technological-wise that he shouldn't even be able to do because we've never seen him do that before. But basically, he can go to any world now, figure out their technology within seconds, and, like, you know, be able to, like, use it and work it and stuff. That's just like how much his character has progressed since sliding. And so like he now has a huge crush on Maggie, but it's just like the whole Wade thing. Will they, won't they thing. They're constant like him and Maggie this season, they act like an old married couple who's always like bickering and stuff. Him and his bond with Rembrandt is stronger than ever before because those are the only two left from the original group. And so he really always looks out for him now. And they no longer argue and stuff. Now he has his brother. And his brother comes from like an Amish type world. And smart. And he's trying to help him his best to adjust to like all the sliding. Sometimes Quinn feels that he should never have taken his brother from that Amish world. And caused him to slide. Because now he's putting his brother in parallel dangers. But they... But his friends reassure him, you know, it's his brother. You know, what other choice did he have? You know what I'm saying? But in all honesty, he really did have the choice of just leaving the dude there. Because the dude didn't know none of this stuff, you know? 
And now, just like his brother said, he's like, it was hard enough for him to adjust on his world, him being so smart and people thinking him as a witch. And now he has to like adjust to all these other worlds and all the dangers and stuff. Maggie. Maggie gets a complete overhaul this season. When I say she became the weight of the group, she became the weight of the group. Now she still has her toughness and her meanness, but she's a little bit more of the she will leap first before looking type person. But my God, her personality is so much more pleasant than that of the third season. She's more caring. She's more sincere. She cares about complete strangers on other worlds now, which before she never did. There are some, like in the first couple of episodes, and even throughout this entire season, there's some sh extremely touching episodes where she cares for other people because she sees they're being hurt by the cro and stuff, or she's seeing they're being hurt by her own human people and stuff. And it's like, there was like this one episode where it's like this religious cult and they're killing people. And she bonds with this one lady very quickly and it breaks her heart to know this lady literally sac like killed herself believing in this cult. And then there was this one really good episode where it was this VR episode where she thought everything she was doing was real and she is she's literally the sole trooper trying to save quinn and rembrandt as like they're stuck on that world because they missed the slide window and it's like rembrandt is going through like withdrawal of like what all has been going to him and freaking out and stuff and quinn is just lally gagging around kind of and trying to fix the timer and so she's trying, and so both them guys are addicted to VR, especially Rembrandt. So she's trying her stream best to like help them over, um, overbeat their addiction and stuff because they have to slide on out of there and fix the timer. But then it turns out she is the one in VR. She was the one who was captured and it was Quinn and Rembrandt, the ones behind the scenes trying to like help her and stuff. And she now has the addiction to VR. It was an intriguing episode, it was a great twist, and it really humanized her character. Rembrandt. Dear God, what did they do to Rembrandt this season? Not bad, per se, but just tragic. The man was tortured by the Chromax for three months, and you know they have mind control capability and all kind of torture devices. And the fact that he lost one of his closest friends and that he's not going to see none of his other friends and that everybody on his earth is like in dire need and taken captive. And remember, he still has a brother that's alive on his world because his parents are both gone and stuff. And it's just like, you know, it's so sad and tragic. Like when we see him, he is a shell of his former self. Like just like his hands on like his head and his eyes closed talking about you're not real Quinn. I know you're just an illusion again. And Quinn is trying to reassure him that he is the real deal. You know what I'm saying? And then after they slot off that world, Rembrandt is now a changed man. He is now a ventral racist man towards the Chromax. He hate everything Chromax. He wants to kill everything Chromax. He even uses a Chromax racist term known as Chromagnet um, because they look like um, little bugs to some people. And so a Chromagnet is just like, yeah, just like a regular maggot, but a Chromag. <laughs> and so he uses that term, um, I think once or twice. And Every time they slide to a world and he see Chromax, he can't control himself. He nearly almost blows like missions because he just wants to storm in there with a gun and pop off a couple of Chromax and stuff. And what's even worse is that the Chromax have implanted a hypnotic suggestion that they want him to murder Quinn because they feel Quinn is the one from Chromax Prime who could stop them and he's also the son of the man who like banished them from that planet and stuff that caused all that crap so and there's literally one episode in the side cage where he literally tries to assassinate quinn because he's brainwashed and everything but this one dude that he befriends is able to snap him out of it 
Now, the person he befriends, it's nice to see Rembrandt, you know, really care about, like, other people. Especially, like, this one, like, younger, like, boys that have lost their families and stuff. For some reason, he really connects with those type of um, characters more. And it's revealed in the VR thing, which I don't know how Maggie knew this, but it's revealed that Rembrandt, you know, he didn't always get along with his parents and stuff. They didn't believe in his dream of wanting to be a singer and stuff. And so that's probably why he has such a bond with young boys that get abandoned like he did in season three with that one boy from Maggie's world and now this one dude from um, that living in the um, slide cage. Now, his heart towards Cormax do kind of soften a little bit towards the very end of the season when he goes to Cromag Prime 2 and he sees that there Cromags are basically treated like crap and they're in prison and they're experimenting on by the humans and stuff and he couldn't help but to feel sad when seeing all those Cromag children you know being like harmed and stuff now there is also and also a very touching episode where he falls madly in love with this one woman. I've already explained that in my um, Valentine's Day video, so go watch that. Um, there's also a really huge racist episode that he's involved in because on that world they don't like nobody who's not white. And I've also made a video about that, so go watch that. And then there's Colin now. Colin is kind of like a big child. Well, he's basically a, a man child. <laughs> He's very naive. He doesn't really know much about like the real world, like say our world, because he comes from like an Amish type world where everybody's like that with very primitive technology into the fact that they really don't even want technology on that world. And every time he creates it, they think of him as like a witch or something like that. And he's a, he's a genius person who was able to create some amazing stuff on a world that was very limited. And so when they find him, of course, they give him like the, they, they, they inform him what's going on with the memory dot thing. And he decides he's going to slide with the rest of the people. It takes him a very good long while. Well, not, it takes him a very good long while in that one episode to adjust to sliding. But then after that, we kind of see him adjust very quickly to sliding, but he's still naive and stuff. He has a huge heart. He believes, um, People should be punished for like their bad deeds, but he always assumes that people are like good until they he finds out they're not. He ends up bonding with a half human, half Cro-Mag woman, and that was very vital because she helped them like escape that world and stuff. And it's just like you know he gets along with everybody on the group, and then it's like you know him and Rembrandt they kind of hang out a bit more than him and Quinn. Because Rembrandt kind of wants to like corrupt him into like this cool guy party kind of way, you know. He wants to instill some coolness on him. Now as for recurring characters, Gone is Diggs. Diggs is no more there. Um, the original Calzone is, uh, Calzone or whatever his name was, the hotel dude, he's no longer there. Supposedly he gets replaced by another one. They both have the same name on the internet. So I'm guessing it's the same person, but they look completely different and stuff. And you really, and, and this show still brings in like doubles every now and then, which is great because that's what the whole premise of this show is supposed to be about. And the third season, you really didn't see that many doubles and stuff. Episodes this season are more thought provoking once again with that huge sci-fi element. Sci-fi takes a major, major push in this season. But I can let it, but I'm okay with it because, you know, even though it was, it sounded very futuristic to us back then, a lot of that stuff is coming to flourishing now. And some of it really has been created like little chips and people's wrists that activate like doors and vending machines and stuff like that. They had a world like that, where that's basically what you use to pay for everything for and open doors and stuff. Um, and it's just, it's just really fascinating how so much of that season has somewhat come to like fruition and stuff. And like I said before, there's still action, but it's blended in a way that it doesn't 
oversaturate the season like it did in the first um, the, the, the third season no longer do we see these big bodybuilding people in tight outfits no longer do we see these women um that was slim waist supermodel looking women with huge breasts wearing like tiny skirts and short shorts and stuff like that now it's more like realistic looking people once again and it's great in the first couple of episodes like we don't see Colin. It takes a good while for him to like show up. It takes about, it takes six episodes for him to show up, which is a great introduction. They didn't like overdo it and thank God they didn't. But in those like first um, five episodes, those were such good episodes, like profit and loss. Like, you know, it's that religious cult world I was telling you about. Common Ground is another great episode. It was one where Chroma has ruled this one world and it's like as the slider taken captive, Maggie ends up bonding with the head commander dude on that planet who's a Chroma. And that head commander dude, his peers don't like him because they've been somewhat banished to that planet to conduct research and stuff because he failed in the mission. And we actually see a Cro-Mag that is sympathetic with the heart, but he's still cro to the core. But then he ends up, because they create a weapon that's supposed to kill all humans. But then when Quinn starts playing around with it and set it for cro instead of humans, he knows this. And he allows Quinn to do it because he wants all the cro including himself, to die on that world because he just can't live with who he is and stuff. He feels as though he's a failure to his people. His people hate him. His people conduct such evil experiments and he's conflicted. And it's really great when you see stuff like that, where you see like an evil person who just doesn't want to be evil no more and they see the error of their ways. World Killer is one of my all time favorite episodes. It really utilizes the concept of doubles and i love it and we also get to see another quinn double this one is more arrogant and um he kind of like he rushes stuff rushes things so much that he thought he killed everybody on his world but he didn't he just had way too much power in his sliding technology and he slid everybody on the world to another planet the Dying Field is another great episode. It's action packed, but it's action done right. And there we get to see human slash Chromag hybrids because the Chromags are no longer able to have children. Why? <clears throat> because the weapon was designed to like do something to um, the Chromag females. Either it killed the females off or it caused them not to be able to have babies no more. And so now the Chromats have to breed with like human women, which they hate doing and they hate their offspring, but they need to like have their race like flourish and stuff. And they use these hybrids to like fight in their wars and stuff. And you know, that's when Sally Wade is at again pumped by Chromats and pushing out babies and stuff. Ugh, it's so sad. And so there, you know, they're on a world where the Chromats bring like humans from other world and they hunt them down for training experiments. And so that's when Colin like befriends that one hybrid lady. Just Say Yes is a really good episode about drugs where they try, well it's a planet where pretty much everybody takes drugs because they can't just cope with life. If they're like anxious for a test, they inject themselves with some drugs. If they're nervous on going on a first date, they inject themselves with some drugs. Um, if they normally, they, they, if they're not as happy as they want to be, they inject themselves with some drugs. And it really shows you just how dependent people are on everyday drugs, not just like bad drugs, but like medical drugs too. And as Colin and Maggie are captured, they are constantly being injected with drugs. And then they are constantly having, uh, Maggie is having like a huge withdrawal at one point. And it's a really, really, really fascinating episode. Lipshits Live, I've already like talked about that in my uh, Valentine's Day episode. 
it harpers back to season one where they had more humor. Jerry really liked that episode. He got to direct it. There's a really cool like Romeo and Juliet world where you see like people of high society with technology and the internet. And then you see the lower class people who live like in like um, just like dingy area and run down shacks and they're not supposed to interact with each other but two people are star-crossed lovers and everything and you know you know how it goes <laughs> slide by raya is another great maggie episode where she gets to see her husband since him getting shot by rickman in season three but this husband is played by a different actor and on this world he's not paraplegic and in this world he hates maggie so there's a lot of conflict there because not only is she she wants to re-fall in love with her husband, but the world there is really screwed up to the point where she's literally about to be experimented on. There's a really good, cool, like Wild Wild West episode, another one. We had one in season two, now we have one here. This one's more of a traditional Wild Wild West type episode. There are some other episodes in here that are alright, and there's some ones that are not. I can't wait till I do like episodes i hate of this season because there's just some bizarre episode like the chasm rose taken which i've already explained um it, ugh, i just can't stand those episodes my brother's keeper was a really intriguing episode we get to see quinn's like dad his new dad and like oh well, it's like a, a duplicate um his double and it's kind of like on that world they clone people and they rip the organs out their body and put them in other people that need them and because they used to rip them out of like healthy people and stuff and the clones they rebel you know they they hate humans and it's a huge conflict and the slides of course have to save the day on that world then the season ends off on like um i think it's called revelations it's where like they think they're on chromat prime but they're not and they really truly believe they are and but it turns out they're on chromat prime too and it turns out quinn's parents on that world are evil that experiment on the chromags and stuff and so it ends with them still trying to find chromat prime the real one but of course as we know in season five that never happens all right i'll talk to y'all later bye